In this lecture, we will be looking at components of vectors. So why do we have to look at this particular topic? So the main reason is that although we have discussed about vectors and defined them and defined various operations like addition on vectors, still we do not know exactly how to perform algebra on them. So this particular topic that is to split a vector into components will actually help us in doing algebra on vectors. Okay, so again, let us start something start with something which we are already familiar with. That is the three dimensional right handed coordinate system. So as I have drawn here, you have the x axis, you have the y axis. And if I turn my fingers from x to y axis, you actually point in the z axis. And hence it is a three dimensional right handed coordinate system. And suppose you have a point P with coordinates A, B and C. So uh, you can clearly see from this diagram that the x coordinate, which is the uh, marked on the x axis is A, on the y axis it is B and on the z axis it is C. Okay, so this uh, particular uh, point, how can you represent it as a vector? So in order to do this, there is a convention which is followed and the convention is as follows that the unit vector along the x axis is generally denoted by small i, small i with a hat on top of it. So what this means is this is the unit vector along the x axis. Similarly, we reserve the letter small j for the unit vector along the y axis. So j, it is usually known as a hat. j hat is a unit vector along the y axis. And similarly, k is a unit vector along the z axis. Okay, so now since we have the unit vectors along these three axes, now there is a way in which you can write the po uh, point P as a vector. And that is simply as A times, so P can be written as A times I, the unit vector I plus BJ, the unit vector J plus CK, where I, J and K are the unit vectors. So this is a way in which we write a vector into the components in three dimensional space. Okay. So now what else? So and further, uh, uh, when one asks you about components of a vector, you have these three scalar components, which are A, B and C, and the vector components are A, I, B, J and C, K. The next thing that uh, one, uh, the next thing which we can do uh, with respect to the components is, suppose you want to find the length of this vector and that uh, you, you need to find uh, with respect to the components. So how do we do that? Now, again, uh, if you look at this figure, it is very clear that you, uh, when I put, uh, when I took the projection of this vector on the x, y plane, what I got is this particular, this particular line. Okay, and this you can clearly see is if you look at this particular triangle, it's a right triangle. It's a right triangle and its two sides are A and this side is B. So what you get is like this particular side will become root of A square plus B square. The length of this particular side is root of A square plus B square. So root of A square plus B square. All right. Now let us look at this particular triangle this particular triangle here you have one side we already uh, found out that its length is equal to root of a square plus b square and the length of this side is equal to c because its z coordinate is equal to c and hence again using pythagoras theorem in this particular right triangle you will get that the length of this particular side so the if you call if you want to uh, name it i will get it as o p I will get OP is equal to, again using Pythagoras theorem, you will get it as square root of the sum of the squares of the two sides. So the square of this side is A square plus B square. 
and the third side and the other side is c so you will get plus c square so using pythagoras theorem we have actually deduced that the length of the particular vector op or the position vector of p is equal to the square root of a square plus b square plus c square so this can be written as uh, uh, as you can uh, see i use this particular notation to denote the length of the vector op it's equal to square root of a square plus b square plus c square okay yeah so we know that uh, once you have the components of a particular vector uh, we know how to uh, write down its length in terms of its components all right so um, then coming back to uh, one more thing is that we uh, learned previously about when uh, certain terms which are associated with a vector and these are the direction ratios and the direction cosines okay so suppose i have i give you a vector like p equal to ai plus bj plus ck then what can you say about its direction ratios and direction cosines okay so the first thing is direction ratio uh, it's nothing but simply the scalar components of the particular vector okay so p if i give you this vector ai plus bj plus ck and i ask you the direction ratios they are simply a b and c okay so the direction ratios are equal to nothing but the components of the particular vector okay and uh, coming uh, coming to direction cosines direction cosines as you remember uh, the direction ratios and the cosines are proportional but the cosines are actually direction cosines are cosines of the particular angles okay so what you need to do is direction cosines will be given by the same direction ratios but divided by its magnitude because as we have seen in the previous class there is this relation between the direction ratios and the direction cosines okay so the direction cosines will be given so there are three direction cosines the first one will be given by a divided by square root of a square plus b square plus e square the second direction cosine will be given by b divided by square root of a square plus b square plus e square and similarly the you can write down now uh, the third direction cosine n will be equal to c divided by square root of a square plus b square plus e square okay so now we have got this in fact geometrically what uh, the direction cosine will uh, give you it gives you nothing but the unit vector along this particular vector so as we can see um, the unit vector along a particular vector is given by the components divided by the length of the vector so in this case as we have seen already when you took the vector with components a b and c we uh, if you look at the magnitude of this vector having components l m and n you will get that l square plus m square plus n square is equal to 1 in fact we saw that in the previous lecture so what we have found out is that the direction cosines actually give the components of a vector which whose direction is same as the given vector but its magnitude is equal to 1 okay so as i told earlier uh, splitting the vectors into components actually helps us to do algebra on vectors okay so uh, what uh, what are the operations that we generally do on vectors so we do addition subtraction and scalar multiplication so let us see how exactly one can do these uh, operations when they are given in uh, in terms of components okay so uh, suppose i give you one vector say the first vector is uh, a1i plus uh, a2j plus a3k uh, so we are writing it down in the three components 
and uh, suppose I give you the second vector b as b1 i plus b2 j plus b3 k okay and I ask you to add these two vectors a and b all right so now um, uh, once they are given in the components actually addition becomes very simple it's right forward uh, which is uh, the obvious thing to do is to add their components just as you add real numbers okay so you will get a1 plus b1 as the first component so this times i plus the next one would be a2 plus b2 times j and the last one would be a3 plus b3 times k all right so now that we have got uh, now you know how to add uh, two vectors when they're given in terms of components okay similarly you can do subtraction so all that you need to replace is if you want to add a minus b here the only changes would be you have to do a1 minus b1 a2 minus b2 and a3 minus b3 okay the next thing that comes is how do you uh, multiply by scalars okay so suppose let us take again the same vector a as a1 a a1 i plus a2 j plus a3 k and suppose i want to multiply by a scalar k so k times a a yeah so uh, obviously what uh, came to your mind is true it's nothing but k a1 i plus k a2 j plus k a3 k okay uh, i am uh, sorry for uh, slightly uh, using the letter k again uh, but i hope it's clear uh, here the k which i meant here is actually a scalar and uh, do not confuse it with the unit vector k with a hat on top of it okay all right so once we have this so scalar multiplication is also fine all right. okay Ka going next uh, using components when can we say that two vectors are equal to each other and that is again uh, straightforward the two vectors are equal to each other if and only if all their components are equal to each other okay so for example here if uh, if, if i ask you when a and b are equal to each other the answer is that only if a1 is equal to b1 and a2 is equal to b2 and a3 is equal to b3 even if one component differs the vectors are not equal okay all right so uh, with these things done um, now we are in a state to uh, solve a few uh, problems to illustrate the concepts which we have uh, discussed so far okay and let us start with a simple example and that is suppose i give you so let us look at the first problem uh, which is to find the direction cosines of a particular uh, vector so uh, suppose i give you the hmm, a number uh, not a number a point whose coordinates are say 1 root 3 and root 5 and i ask you to find the direction cosines of this uh, position vector of p okay so uh, as we have learned already what you need to do is okay before going to direction cosines if i ask you direction ratios then it's pretty straightforward the answer is 1 root 3 and root 5 okay but when you have to find the direction cosines what you have to do is you have to uh, the first direction cosine will be l will be equal to 1 divided by the square root of the sum of squares so square root of 1 square plus root 3 square plus root 5 square okay and uh, as we can see the answer comes out to 1 divided by so this is 1 plus 3 4 plus 5 9 and square root of 9 is equal to 3 so the answer is 1 by 3 all right uh, coming to the next thing which is m uh, the second direction cosine will be equal to root 3 divided by this is this remains the same the denominator remains the same it's root 9 so it's 3 
and uh, hence the answer to this is 1 by root 3 okay and similarly the last direction cosine will be given by n equals 1 divided by uh, not 1 uh, it's root 5 sorry so the root 5 divided by 3 and this is the last direction cosine so we have got the direction cosine of the um, given position vector it is 1 by 3 1 by root 3 and root 5, root 5 by 3 Okay, and you can easily check for yourself that it uh, satisfies the, the condition for the direction cosines that is this square plus this square plus this square will be equal to 1. All right. Now let us uh, look into another problem uh, which makes use of uh, several concepts which we uh, studied in this lecture. Okay, so let me give you two vectors say A. Uh, given by say i plus j plus k and uh, say b uh, let it be equal to i plus 2j uh, plus 3k yeah so once i have given you these vectors and the question is to find a vector, uh, to find a vector, a vector with magnitude magnitude equal to say 5 and uh, I need to specify a direction also, right? So along A plus B. Okay. Okay. So how how to proceed with this problem? So as we have already seen, when two vectors are given in component form, it's straightforward to add them up. You just have to take the components and add them separately. So in this case, it will be a plus b will be some of the components. So uh, uh, it will be two i plus three j plus 4k okay now what you need to do is you need to find a vector whose direction is same as this vector but its magnitude is given as 5 okay so the way to do it is find the unit vector in this along this vector um, and that is very simple you have to just divide this vector by its magnitude okay so uh, the unit vector along this direction if I call it as say some um, a plus b. So let us stick to the notation. So <coughs> a plus b hat, okay. A plus b hat is a unit vector along a plus b. So that is will be equal to the same vector divided by its magnitude. So its magnitude is square root of, so it will be 2i plus 3j plus 4k divided by its magnitude which is square root of the sum of squares of this so this is 4 plus 9 uh, which is 13 13 plus 16 which is 29 so it becomes divided by square root of 29 okay so what we have got now is we have got the unit vector along the vector a plus b this one but this now has got just magnitude equal to 1 but the question asks you to find a vector whose magnitude is equal to 5 and that is straightforward you just have to multiply this vector by 5. So the required vector will be this particular vector this particular vector times 5 okay so that gives you gives us the required vector. <coughs> 